Refresh somebody. You need to you need to to help somebody out. That's I mean that's why we come in on Wednesday night. That's why we come in on on, on Sundays. I mean we, we we encourage each other. The Bible says you know iron sharper than iron. We we try to refresh each other and get ready for another week. And it needs to be a consistent thing. Unfortunately, encouragement is not a one and done thing. And uh, Philemon, Philemon was a was a consistent encourager. So I say this, be a consistent encourager. Now over in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, there's an interesting uh, passage. Turn over there, and we'll wrap it up somewhere around. I've got a few other things to say, and then we'll finish. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. You know, sometimes there won't be anybody around to encourage you. I mean, it's a situation where you can't just open up and tell publicly what's going on. And you're going to have to do like David here in 1 Samuel chapter 30. It says in verse 3, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices, their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people were gr was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I mean, there's times in your life when, you know, man's encouragement, even they may be well-meaning, it just, uh, it's not doing it. Amen. Or it may be a situation, like I said, it's very private, and, you know, you've got nobody to take it to but the Lord. Right. And I mean, let me say this, that's a real good place to take it to. <laughs> that's a real good place. Like uh, one old preacher I, I remember saying, you can tell him the deep recesses and private things you wouldn't even tell your wife, and he will not run around the corner and tell somebody else. That's what I like about prayer, amen? I can tell the Lord anything, and, and he's not going to run around and tell somebody else. But he encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And uh, sometimes that's all the encouragement you got. And you know something? When I've needed encouragement, in, in, sometimes you wake up in the night, and the devil's just on you really bad. And uh, you're beginning to get depressed, and you're thinking about some things, and maybe you've mentioned them to the church, maybe you've mentioned them to nobody. And uh, you know something? You get to talking to the Lord there, and you say, you never let me down. Amen. Your way is always the right way. Right. You always give enough grace to get through anything. Yeah. And man, by the time you get done with saying words like that, you're encouraged. Yes, sir. And uh, it, I've had to do that many times, and, and sometimes it's... it's it's pretty tough to do, pretty hard, but you encourage yourself uh, in the Lord. Now, if you have a ministry of encouraging or you want to, you know, do a little bit more than you're doing now, let me tell you what you're not going to get. You're not going to get recognized for it. You're not get your name written in the sword of the Lord or you're not going to be mentioned on the radio, you know. You're going to do it yourself for the Lord and because you know it's right to do. But I tell you what, I believe God recognizes it. I believe He notices. I believe you'll get mentioned at the judgment seat of Christ for it. You'll get your reward, just maybe not down here. So, I don't do a lot of poems, but I want to end my message with a poem. I'm not a poem guy, but I like this poem. Poem written by a woman named Alice Bennett. It says, I have no voice for singing, I cannot make a speech. I have no gift for music. I know I cannot teach. I am no good at learning. Uh, I'm no good at leading. So I can't write. I, I'm no good at writing. <laughs> I'm no good at, at leading. I cannot organize. And anything I write would never win a prize. But at roll call and meetings, I always answer here. When others are performing, I lend a listening ear. It seems my only talent is neither big nor rare, just to listen and encourage and to fill a, a vacant chair. But all those gifted people could not so brightly shine were it not for those whose use, who use a talent such as mine. Amen.
And so if all you ever do in the Christian life is encourage somebody else, you're liable to get more rewards of the judgment of Christ than you think. Because it might be the action, it might be the word that you said or did that keeps that person from quitting. Right at the time where they were down and they said, this is no good, I'm throwing in the towel, I'm going back to the world. God might place you in there with just the right thing to say. Nobody will ever know it, but I'll tell you what. That's one of the things I'm looking forward to with the judgment seat of Christ. Stuff like that's going to come out. Amen. And boy, it's going to be a blessing to see who gets the rewards. Yes, it is. So be an encourager, Brother Miles. Give it back to you, brother.